presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, valiant fighter for truth and justice who came to Earth from the planet Krypton. Superman, who can travel faster than a rocket, leap tall buildings, bend giant steel girders with his bare hands, and who goes about among men disguised as mild-mannered Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. Kent, who joined the flying expedition of Major Evans Dover to the Central American jungle as a vacation trip, has finally found that the expedition is not for the purpose of uncovering further Mayan ruins. Major Evans confessed to Kent that his true purpose is to obtain the remains of the goddess Ashta, a sacred mummy hundreds of years old, but said to have retained the appearance of a living woman who is only asleep. Three times Kamado, high priest of the tribe which worships the goddess Ashta, has tried to do away with the two white men. The last time they were rescued from an underground temple dungeon by a cockney deserter from the British Navy who acts as counselor to Tasso, the tribal chief. Bert, as the cockney calls himself, then asked Major Dover and Kent to help Chief Tasso oust the high priest Kamado from power. This they quickly agreed to do when Bert told them that in return, he would lead them to the secret temple of the goddess Ashton. But while discussing the plan in Bert's village hut, gunshots were heard, and the three rushed out to discover that the Major's plane was apparently on fire. But we join them now. They are starting for the river where the plane is moored. Listen. Major Dover, you go on with Bert. What are you going to do, Kent? I'll try to get some natives to help us. All right, but for heaven's sake, honey. If our plane is destroyed, we'll never get out of this place alive. Okay. I'll join you in a few minutes. Well, those two out of sight, Superman can make better speed than Clark Kent ever could. And speed is important now. Up, up, and away! Faster. I'll need a few minutes to work in before Dover and Bert get to the river. Ah, there's the river. Great Scott. The plane isn't on fire at all. It's surrounded by a circle of planes. Corboy must have set that fire himself to keep the natives away from the plane. Ah, and there he is, lying on the wing, unconscious. Faster, faster. Through these planes, they can't burn Superman. Ah, here we are. Poor Corboy must have been knocked out by a spear. Here, carry him into the cabin and get this plane up before the flames set it on fire. Uh oh. He's coming too. Better change back to Clark Kent. Oh, oh, what? Take it easy, car boy. In we go. Kent, oh, my head. Where'd you come from? Where's Major Dover? Never mind that now. Can you handle these controls? Oh, hang it. I've twisted my arm. Kent, I set that fire on the water to save the ship, and now it's going to burn it up. Not if I can prevent it. Where's the starter? That button there below the bank and turn indicator. Good. What are you going to do? You can't fire this ship, man. Oh, yes, I can. You'll help me with your one good hand. Let's shoot right through that break there in the plane. Okay, kid. If you're game, I am. Let's go. Right. Look. I didn't think we'd make it for a minute. If this ship had really caught on fire, we'd have been goners. We sure would. Hey, what are we going to do now? Well, we'll just fly, fly around a bit until those gasoline flames on the water burn themselves out. <sighs> hey, what on earth happened? Well, a bunch of natives were after me. Some of the high priest's men, I think. What had you done to them? Why should they want to attack I you? I don't know. I was just doing a little exploring in the jungle near the river. Looking for anything in particular? No, just wanted some exercise. Anyhow, all of a sudden, I came to a sort of clearing and... What do you think I saw? Not the temple of the goddess Ashta. Oh, no, I think that's a myth. But what I saw definitely wasn't a myth. It was the wreckage of an airplane. Of an airplane? Yes, sir. I started looking over, but before I could get anywhere, a bunch of natives came leaping through the brush, brandishing spears and shrieking like mad. And I wonder what brought that on. I don't know, and I didn't wait to find out. I beat it down the river and paddled back to the plane. Then when I saw another bunch of wild-eyed natives coming after me, I got some cans of gas and dumped it on the water around the ship. And then set fire to it. Swell idea. Yeah, but it nearly didn't work. Just as I climbed back on the wing and started shooting to signal you and Major Dover, a flock of spears came flying through the air, and uh, one of them must have knocked me out. Something mighty queer about all this. I'd like to get a look at that wrecked plane, Corboy. I bet there's a good story behind it. Now, don't let any of the natives catch you around it, Kent. 
They must regard it as a sacred relic or some such thing, the way they went after me. Look, Corboy. Huh? Isn't that Major Dover down there on the riverbank? Sure is. Old Chief Tassel's with him. Say, it's like he's making signs at the natives in the war canoe. Yeah, that's right. They're all starting for the shore. Hey, wait a minute. Who's another white man with Major Evans and Tassel? Oh, that's Bert. He rescued the Major and me from a gang of Tomato's priests who had us cornered in a temple chamber. He's a cockney, deserter from the British Navy, and now right-hand man to Chief Tasso. That sounds like an interesting character. Yeah. Look, fire burned itself out. Huh? Guess we can win for a landing, huh? Okay. Give me a hand again. Easy now. Careful. That's well. Kent, you're not a bad pilot. Thanks, Corboy. Oh, say, I'll ask Bert about that wrecked plane. He'll know something about it. Well, let me know the first chance you get. Well, aren't you coming ashore? Oh, no, not me. Stuck my neck out once, and that's enough. From now on, I'm going to stay right with this ship. Hey, look, look. We, we've drifted right up to shore. Oh, good. I'll take her back to midstream after I jump ashore. I'll ask Chief Tasso to put some of his own guards on the bank to watch the plane and see that the high priest's men don't bother you. That'll be swell. And uh, thanks a lot, fella, for pulling me out of a tight spot. Oh, forget it. See you later. Boy in the plane? Yes. He's taxiing back to midstream. Oh, I just wanted to know if he's all right. Yes, he's all right. Hey, what's happening here? Oh, some of the natives attacked Corboy. What was the idea of that, Chief? Not Tasso's men. <laughs> hey, Mados. Hey, Tasso didn't know nothing about it, he didn't. That's right, Kent. Tasso joined us as we ran through the village. Oh? He was the one who ordered the war canoes back to the bank. What in heaven's name happened? I'll tell you about that later. First, I've got a question to ask. Bert, do you or Tasso know anything about a wrecked plane around here? Wrecked plane? Yes. What are you talking about, Kent? Well, Corboy has discovered the wreckage of a plane hidden in the jungle near the river. Oh, that... Mm, be a coochious bird, Tasso. Ah, uh, <laughs> Lord, lemme, that fell a couple of years ago, mate. Well, what happened to the pilot? Was he killed in the crash? Mm, Swelp me, he was never found. I was up the river when it happened. But Tasso was here. Man, no come out, Iron Bird. <laughs> he means the pilot wasn't in the plane. The blighter must have jumped out when he started to fall, landed in the jungle somewhere, and croaked. Oh, that's possible. But why should Kimato's men try to kill Corboy because he was looking at the wreckage? Mm, you got me there, boy. <laughs> he got something more important to talk about in a blinking wrecked plane. Sonny, we're all going to the Temple of Hashti. We are? When? Tomorrow night. There's to be a conclave of the tribal council and the priest of the Temple of Ashtar. Yes, and of course, Tasso and his faithful Bertie's got to go. But I don't see how Bert we... says the lake of the crocodiles will be drained enough so the road can be used. Oh. Yes, and you two lads will cross over to the temple as nice as you please. But won't the road be guarded? Of course it will be, but i got a plan I have. Yes? When the moon comes up, you'll... Bert, isn't that Kamado coming along the path from the village? What? Strike me if it ain't. Hey, you blokes go back to your camp, and I'll visit you tomorrow and tell you what's to be done. Right. And mind you, keep a weather eye out for any Kimado's men who might be prowling around. Don't worry. We will. The following night, huddled in the jungle shadows at the edge of the clearing which surrounds the Lake of the Crocodiles in the Temple of Ashta, Major Dover, Clark Kent, Chief Tasso listen attentively while Bert the Cockney whispers final instructions. And uh, mind why, what I'm a telling of you. I'll pass the guard at this end of the road and cross over. Yes? Then, when I'm well on my way, Tessa will start. When he gets up to the guard, he'll knock the blighter out. Then you two comes on the double. Right. From there on, it's easy sailing until we gets in the temple. There won't there be any guard at the entrance to the temple, Bert? He'll be inside. And Mr. Kent and I will take care of him when you get over. All right. Here I go, Mind what I told you now. You think it's going to work, Tessel? Look. White guide, pass guard. Me go now. Get ready. Tessel, Tessel. Suppose you can't overpower that guard. Shall we come out and help you? Tessel need no help. Kent, they've really fixed things. I wonder. You know, Major, this whole thing looks too smooth for me. You mean you think we're being double-crossed? No, not exactly that, but... Look, Major, I'm going to play a hunch. What are you talking about? What are you going to do? Tasso's almost up to the guard now. When he socks him, you go ahead without me. Then what will you do? I, well, I, I can't stop to tell you now. Look, 
Tesso's knocked the guard out. Get going. But, Ken, you've got to trust me, Major. Now, go on, please. I, I'll follow in a few minutes. The road will be unguarded, and I can make it all right. But what will I tell Tesso and Bert? Mm, well, tell them anything that comes to your mind. But hurry, man, hurry. Well, all right. Where are the white men? He, he hurt himself. Said for us to go on. <laughs> Other white man, Fred. We go. Did Bert get across, Tesso? He go in temple. Tesso. Tesso, look. Look at the water. What white chief see? It's rising, Tesso. The leak's filling up again. Ah, uh, Kemado trap us. Kent was right. We've been double-crossed. Kent! Kent! Help! 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 Kent and Chief Tesso were trapped in the middle of the lake of the crocodiles that surrounds the temple of the goddess Ashta. Slowly but surely, the water is rising. And the ugly black snouts of the man-eating monsters push through the water toward the narrow road which will be covered before Dover and Tasso can reach the land ahead or behind. And where is Kent? What is he doing? Only Superman can save these two, yet Kent cannot reveal his other identity to Dover. What will happen? Tune in next time and follow this exciting story of perilous jungle adventure with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. <laughs>